Hello, everyone. Welcome to Remote STEM Class for Richmond TV. It's Mr. Dowd here. So today we're going to go ahead and show you a little quick video on how to use a snipping tool. So for those who don't know what the snipping tool is, it's a program that should be downloaded on all of your um, Chromebooks, but if not, you'll have to download it, which uh, I'll be able to help you with. But uh, other than that, it is a screenshotting tool. So you can screenshot whatever is on your um, your screen at the time. All right, so say if I want to take one of these pictures here, again, these Lawrence pictures, I can screenshot it. So that way I can also save it instead of downloading the picture itself. Or if you want to take a screenshot of a whole tab or whatnot. Okay, so I have the sipping tool here already pinned to my taskbar. For those who don't know how to pin things to taskbars, you just got to right click it and press the pin button. Obviously it's saying unpin from me because it's already pinned. But if you go to your search bar and type in snipping tool, it should come up as this app here. Press enter. It pulls out this little window. All right. So say I want to take a picture of this whole area here. I got to press new. Cancel that for a quick so you press the new button and it comes in you see how the whole screen went dark except for this tab this is the only thing you can move around everything else you can't touch you can't move around all right you see it's kind of looks more gray like or more or less transparent it looks like a film over it that's the canvas that you can take your picture of okay so it's going to always take a snippet as a some type of rectangle or square so you just click and you hold and drag. So if I want to take all this up, okay? So then it makes it into a picture for you. So you can go ahead and press File, Save As. You can pick where you want to save it. So I'm going to save mine in my pictures. I always recommend desktop because it's easy to find, but I'm going to go for pictures today. I'm just going to call it uh, Snippet Tool Preview. And now the picture is saved. Okay. So if I go to like a Google Doc or something, I can go ahead and open or take that picture and post it onto there. So if I go to File, oh, sorry, Insert Image, then Upload from my computer, because remember I saved it to my computer, it should be in pictures, right? Then you can go, where is it? Snipping tool preview. I can just click, hold, and drag it over. And I'll go ahead, and now the picture is there. So you can use that for your projects. Okay, uh, we're going to be using a snippet tool in the near future, so I just wanted you to have a quick tutorial on how to use it. It is a very um, simple tool to use. But um, yeah. Also, I forgot to mention that you can draw on it. So you see there's different pens. If I want to circle something or highlight something so say I'm like reading something that I took a picture of like uh, if I go ahead and take a snippet of say like a like letter or something and I want to highlight the important parts of the letter or the reading material I'm doing I can highlight it using that tool and you can draw on it with the pen and there's all different colors you can put as pen and then of course when there's a pen and a highlight tool there's also an erase tool so if I want to go ahead and erase that all. Okay, so that's just kind of a quick preview of that. We'll be using that for some upcoming projects that we're gonna be doing. Okay, thank you, have a good day. And this should be posted on Friday, so hopefully, hopefully you guys have a great weekend. Bye. Hi guys, it's Miss Bloomer. We're going to continue with our celebration of National Hispanic Heritage Month. Today's focus will be on an artist named Efrain Resinos. He is from Guatemala. His work can be seen on the walls of many of Guatemala's landmark buildings, including the National Library of Guatemala. Now, Efrain Resinos was a painter he was also a sculptor.
when I look at Efrain, I think he reminds me a little bit of Santa. I love his beard. And here he is. Again, looking a little bit like Santa to me, but here he is with one of his sculptures. And here he is with another one of his sculptures. So he was a, quite the artist. He made paintings, he made sculptures. Look at this one. Isn't that great? Some of his paintings are these. Oops. There's one. So he has a very unique style. And when I look at his work, I see that surrealist kind of thing happening. It sort of looks like a dreamlike image. And I love it. I love his little splotchy paint style. Here's another one. And here's another one. Aren't these great? I love his beautiful, rich, bright colors. And I love the contrast between the bright red and that beautiful blue against that black and white image in the center. It looks like two larger images of people. And then there's something going on up here. There's like two smaller people in the background. My assignment for you guys is I want you to do a little bit of research on Efrain Racinos. I've really only told you a little bit about him. I'd like you guys to do a little bit of research on him and then find out three facts about Efrain Racinos and then write them down and you can send them to me in Google Classroom. Okay? So all I'm going to leave you with is that his name is Efrain Racinos. He's an artist from Guatemala. Now it's up to you to do a little bit more research and tell me three facts about him or about his artwork. Okay? So there's his paintings. We'll take a peek through them again. Lots of bright color. Lots of little spotty areas of color. He was also a sculptor. There he is with one of his sculptures. Again, he made large sculptures. Okay, so good luck. Find out three facts that I haven't told you about Efrain Racinos. Good luck. Hi Gators, Mrs. Fairburn here to show you how to make a quick, easy lunch or snack. Uh, just a grilled cheese sandwich. Yesterday I saw some of you making the French toast or two days ago maybe, and you seem to do a pretty good job on that. So grilled cheese is pretty easy, but there's different ways you can make it. So I'm just gonna show you some of the ways that I've learned. So I've already sprayed the pan and you take a slice of bread and you put margarine on one side and then you can take some cheese. Doesn't matter what kind. I found the orange cheese in the fridge, but you can get deli cheese, you can use white cheese. I usually use two pieces. And then you take another slice of bread, right? But before you put this on, I'm going to grab a tomato. I'm not sure if you like tomatoes, but I have a tomato here. And I'm gonna slice it really thin like this on my cutting board. I always want to use a cutting board. You don't want to cut like on the counter because you can make a, a knife mark. Okay, so this is a piece of tomato. It's very thin, you see. And I'm putting it on top of the sandwich. And then I am taking the other slice of bread. 
and putting it like that. Now, another way I learned to make it, which tastes the same, but some people say it tastes differently, is by using, instead of using margarine or butter, this is what I use today, you use mayonnaise, which sounds, ugh. I'll show you how it works. You take mayonnaise and you put it on one side because it spreads really easy and it's, it supposedly doesn't burn. And then again, I'm going to take my tomato. And slice it really thin. And I'm going to take some cheese. Put cheese on first. You could also put ham on this. Or any, really kind of anything, any kind of meat you wanted that would melt. So you have to be careful when you flip it because you don't want it to fall apart. Put the tomato on top. And then I put the mayonnaise on this slice. When I first heard about the mayonnaise trick, I thought that can't be good because I don't really like mayonnaise, but I will show you the difference. This one has mayo. That one has butter. So I'm gonna put it on the stove and I'll show you when we flip it, how they both look. They're both cooking. And the one closest to me is the mayonnaise. Um, this one right here is the mayonnaise and that one is the margarine. So you wanna have it on low heat and you're gonna cook it for a little bit just to have it brown up. Um, we're gonna flip it and when you flip it, we're gonna push down on it. Now you might say, oh miss, grilled cheese is so easy. All you're gonna do is, you know, put a pan and cheese and, and bread and butter or whatever. But, um, which is true, it is. But it's a good snack if you're sick of sandwiches, cold sandwiches, or if you're sick of cereal or some other type of breakfast slash lunch that you've been eating. It's really good with soup too on a cold day. Okay, it's a nice change. So I am going to flip it to the other side to see what it looks like. So I flipped it once. The one that's closest to me again is the one with the mayo and the other one is the margarine. It's really thick sandwich because it has a tomato in it. So you have to be careful when you flip it. I had to use my other hand. It wasn't quite, quite brown, but when I did flip it, I ended up pushing down on it like this. So it would brown a little bit and stick together. Okay. But you can hear it now cooking. And again, some people like to add ham. Some people don't like a tomato with it. Some people only like certain kinds of cheese or certain kinds of bread even. All right, but it's just another way that you can have something for lunch or a snack. I know you guys have like had fried bologna and fried salami. You could also put that in between or um, do that up separately. So I'm going to flip it again and see what it looks like. Okay, so I flipped it again. The one that's closest to me is the one with the mayonnaise on it, and the one farthest has the butter. See how nice and brown it looks? Okay, and you can hear it toasting up. So it's almost done. Okay, I'd say give it another maybe minute and then flip it again for one final flip. When I do flip it, I do press down. All right, just like with the pancakes, I want it to get nice and brown. I can smell it now. Everything's starting to melt, the cheese and the tomato and the bread, so it's all gonna stick together. So I'm gonna flip it one more time and then I'm going to put it on a plate to show you my final project. Okay, so this is my final project. The one that's closest to me is the one that had the mayonnaise on the outside and this one has the butter, all right? So they both look exactly the same. I personally think they taste the same. Though I don't like mayonnaise, but you can't taste it in the sandwich. And I always cut it down the middle like this. You're gonna use a knife too. And then you have a nice grilled cheese and tomato sandwich. See? So, and you can have a nice warm lunch. This looks like a lot of tomato, but it really isn't. It was just thick. See the cheese is in there. Okay. So just another idea for a lunch or a snack. I'm gonna actually put these on top of each other to make it two sandwiches. And I'm gonna check my family later to see if they notice the difference between the butter and the mayonnaise. <laughs> All right, until next time. Hola,
Hola, mis amigos. El señor Lame está aquí para explicar cómo usar los subtítulos en español en YouTube. Siento lo mal que está mi español, pero lo estoy intentando. Hoy voy a mostrarles cómo usar el subtítulo en YouTube. Primero, tienes que estar en YouTube. Uh, classwork y click to assignment aquí y el video aquí para llegar aquí tienes que hacer, hacer clic en el título del video aquí una vez que estás en YouTube Abre un botón en la esquina inferior derecha de la pantalla llamando sí, sí. Aquí. Y haces clic en los subtítulos. Subtítulos aquí. Llega vas a la rueda de ajuste a la derecha del sí, sí. Y haces clic en los subtítulos. Aquí. Subtítulos y aquí y verás que las que el inglés está marcado y debajo de eso dirá auto traducir aquí si hace clic en eso desplace hacia abajo para encontrar el español y haga clic en él dónde está el español Español, 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 español aquí. Y muchas lenguas. Pero español está aquí. Clic. Ahora podrás seguir en español. Aquí. Buena suerte, mis amigos. Hey guys, welcome back to Virtual PE. I'm Miss Sridi, and y'all know this guy, this is Mr. Yameen. All right, right now we only got one mic, so I'm gonna be do doing all the talking today. We got a quick shout out to one of Motsi, our eighth grader here, who had a great idea that she wants to be back in the park, so we did our workout in the park today for you guys. I really hope you enjoy our workout. A couple of other things. I know you guys have been sore. Just keep on working, keep doing the sets. Um, and every other day we'll stretch, all right? Today's workout is a full body workout. We're gonna do some um, abs, our core. We're gonna do some uh, calf muscles, um, legs, abs, shoulders, um, and triceps, all right? The back of your arm, all right? So I really hope you get out there. You're gonna need either a chair or a couch and get to work. Also, next week, we're going to add some of those um, water jugs that you've been saving or the recycled um, items. Or we kind of brainstorm and thought maybe some rice bags that you guys buy or like extra large soup cans that can help out if you don't have any recycled items. All right, because we definitely want to add, again, more weight to our workout. And that's the easiest way that we can think of. All righty. All right, so we hope you enjoy our workout today. Uh, make, you're going to do five sets and... I don't know, let's get to it.
for joining us for another episode of Enrichment TV, Gators. Remember, work hard, be nice, and we'll see you tomorrow.